the relation between the canon of medicine of Avicenna and modern thought. Considerations are not wanting which entitled the canon of medicine of Avicenna to an esteemed position in modern thought. In the first place, there is the outstanding intellectual culture of the Saracen Empire during the period of history to which Avicenna belongs. Secondly, in the case of much of his teaching, it may be said that the difference from ours is largely only that his speech is alien and is apt to be misunderstood. These days, the great complexity of the language with which we express our scientific thought corresponds with the intricacy of the instruments wherewith facts are elicited. Thirdly, many of the advances of modern times offer solutions to the very theorems and propositions of former times. Finally, ideas are to be found in his work which provides suggestions for useful research in the future. The importance of idea of a material achievement is not to be forgotten. The achievements of any age are subject to decay with the lapse of centuries, but the ideas which gave rise to them remain living through all cycles. Therefore to propose a real place for Avicenna in modern thought is not to propose a return, as it were, to old architecture, or the costumes of long ago. It is rather to render accessible today the picture which he painted, and so enable it to renew its still vital message. It is to play over again the music which he expressed, and enable perhaps one or two to rejoice in it. And this is without obscuring the issue by discussing nationality, or schools of thought, the evolution of ideas, or technical methods. If it appears to some a fault that the master appears to have used passages from other works, and this without full acknowledgement, it should be remembered that after all, a painter may use pigments that someone else has manufactured, and is allowed even to employ other persons to execute certain portions of his picture. Indeed, even after his decease, it is not improper that some may have been entrusted with the delicate task of touching up faded portions of the canvas which he bequeathed. The place for Avicenna in modern thought is gained when it is agreed that he shall be viewed as one who entered this world and entrusted with a mission independently to express for that age, by means of those various tools which he then found in it, the wisdom which is unchanging and impersonal. So also there is the need today that this same wisdom should be re-expressed for this age by means of the new data which lie to our hands.